That's like how you like to start things out? It's because, like, it's one of those things where, like, when Pete, I like it because it can just sound like random words, but if somebody recognizes it, they're like, bro. <laughs> so you you had a whole theory about Will Smith and Queen Latifah? Yeah, Will Smith is the female, sorry, Queen Latifah is the female Will Smith. Okay. So and we started off as a rapper, as a teenager. Yes. Then got their own sitcom. That was a successful, beloved sitcom. Uh, they uh, then led into an acting career where they're very respected as an actor. The difference is Will Smith, you know, kept acting while Queen Latifah uh, branched out into different areas of music to the point where she, like, she has jazz albums. Uh, but, yeah, like they, like, they had a similar start where it's, they started off as a rapper then got a sitcom and showed that they were capable of basically doing whatever they wanted. Yeah. And then Will Smith made that King Richard movie where his shorts were so short you could see what his balls were thinking. The end. Is that how the, that how the story ends? I, I mean... Look, all yeah. I'm saying is you, it's almost like you can see which nut Venus came out of and which nut Serena came out of. There you go. That's how tight those damn, tight and short those damn shorts are. Would you have wanted, do you want a sitcom or a show or a movie? I, I mean, I grew up watching sitcoms. I'd love a, like, at this point, my biggest idea for a TV show, I would not, I would either not be on screen or I'd be like a, a minor character. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mainly because my main idea is, uh, it's called Lady Problems. Okay. And it takes place at like a specialty home for women who are the victims or like undergoing like supernatural experiences. Okay. So like, I've thought about this a bunch. I'm seeing it. (laughs) Yeah. So like main character, she uh, is cursed that uh, romantic partners will become violently jealous and obsessive over her Mm -hmm. Uh, and then there's another one who is possessed but mostly able to keep the demon at bay okay Uh, there's a girl who is uh, benevolently haunted by the ghost of her brother who died while uh, giving her his kidney okay and uh, but like he's kind of a clumsy ghost who can't figure out what he's like solid and what he's not okay uh and uh, there is like a girl who's basically the last character in a Final Destination movie. Mm. So like accidents just happen around her. Around, not to. They're meant for her, and then something mm. always happens last second. Okay, okay. Uh, and then I've also played with like the idea of there is just the world's oldest woman who wants to die but can't. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, this is an idea that I've had for quite a while. Like most, most ideas that I have for like TV or movies are based somewhere in horror as well because I love mm-hmm. horror. Uh, I, but yeah, like that—that's an idea that like it's one of those things that I've had it for so long and haven't started to think it was stupid mm. that I'm like, this is probably a good idea. That's fair. So it sounds like you're more. That's like you lean more into just focusing on being a stand-up. That's your thing. I mean, stand-up is what... I went through a lot of shit as a kid, Mm -hmm. and watching comedy was my escape, Mm -hmm. but stand-up was the stuff where I was like, I want to do that. What do you mean when you went through shit as a kid? What do you mean by that? Uh, So, one, my mom suffered from some pretty severe mental illnesses, but the big thing was somewhere between fourth and fifth grade. Mm -hmm. When I was nine years old, my parents went through an incredibly messy divorce. My mom spent time in a mental hospital, and then shortly after she got out, that's when she attempted to kill herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, lied to me about it. And that night was also, uh, because obviously I called my dad and didn't know what to do, and my mm-hmm. dad was a doctor. Uh, that night, my dad helped save my mom's life, and that was the last time those two were ever civil to each other. So, watching stand up, like, was my escape. Mm. And so, it, it, like, there are a lot of comedy shows that I love, but I just, I don't want to redo them. I don't want to redo Third Rock from the Sun. Mm-hmm. I don't want to redo fucking The Red Green Show. Mm. Like, if I make something, I want to make something that's mine and my own. 
uh, and the beauty of stand up is I can literally take my life. And well, not everything I do is based on my life. Like some of the most recent stuff I've been working on is I'm proud of Taylor Swift for finally fucking an athlete. Okay. But there is also the, like I said, my mom attempted to kill herself and lied to me about it, and that is a bit mm. that I do. Mm-hmm. Not in every show, because not every audience is ready for that. That's fair. But there is a reason why I run a dark stuff themed show. Yeah. It's so that stuff like that can get worked on. Do you feel like those experiences have affected your sense of humor in a big way? Absolutely. Mm. Uh, I mean, there, there's a few things. One, I, I do think, like any comedian, our lives are not more absurd than anybody else's. We're just better at finding the absurdity in things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to me, it's like, I look for the humor in tragedy. I look for, and like, a lot of it is so, you know, everyone talks about their favorite comics. Mine is Christopher Titus. Ah. Uh, (laughs) Yes. Ah, okay. Explains a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you had that reaction. A lot of times when I say that, people are like, who? Yeah. Uh, Because Christopher Titus... I, I mean, he had that incredible sitcom mm. in, like, the late 90s, early 2000s. But he never really, like, launched, launched. No. Right? He's never been a household name. But he's the one who, when I was a teenager, I watched and didn't feel alone anymore. Mm. And, like, through that, like, that's what I really love about stand-up is when somebody relates to, especially stuff about the harsh personal life stuff, they fucking relate to it. Mm. Like, we did have uh, a show recently where I did this stuff about my mom, and somebody in the audience, his mom had recently attempted suicide. Mm. And it helps knowing that you're not the only fucking one. Right. Uh, yeah. I think that is weirdly noble. You wouldn't, ex- I wouldn't, I, I think when people watch your comedy, they would not describe it as noble. But in the context, I got you, I got you. Thank you. In the context of of why you approach comedy in the way you do, I, I think it's a fairly noble reason. Well, it, it's also, like, affected my stuff about, like, when people talk about cancel culture. Mm-hmm. No, it's don't people count. And, like, Cat Williams, before this... Oh, was, we gotta talk about it! No, wait, this is... <laughs> I'm talking well before the Club Shay Shay's thing. Okay. Talked about... Uh, no, if you were actually funny, you'd be able to work within the parameters of what people yeah, yeah, yeah. And I agree with that because, like, again, the reason I love stand up is because it made me not hurt. It made me not feel so alone. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck would I want to write jokes that hurt people, though? It's fair. Okay. So, on a philosophical level, yeah. is there a line to you in terms of a joke? I mean, first off, the line is I really, it's more intention. And, okay. and you know, I do a fuck ton of roast battles. Yep. Right? My intention is this joke is about somebody and and this is most stuff. Like the politicians don't need our fucking protection, right? But like if I'm doing a joke about a group of people, mm-hmm. would they laugh? Mm. Like if I write a roast joke about you, I'm not trying to say the meanest thing possible. I'm trying to say the funniest thing possible. Right. Because any roast joke about Aaron Chase should be making Aaron Chase laugh first and foremost. Yeah. It's, it's something that I wrote for you, right? So, like, that's why, like, I do a lot of, you know, I do a lot of pro-trans or neutral to trans stuff. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, there's that great James at Acaster bit of, you know, people are like, what's the matter, not challenging for you? Oh, yeah, you know who needs an extra challenge? Yeah. The trans community. Uh, but, like, for me, it's, no, y'all have been hurt enough. Mm-hmm. So let's do stuff that's going to make y'all laugh. I'll mm-hmm. bring in things with it. But, like, yeah, it's, if, if I'm trying to make you laugh when I do that joke, we're good. Yeah. Like, if if I do a racial joke, if I do a, you know, my, my jokes that, like, uh, about, you know, white women co ops and social movements, is that going to make some white women laugh? Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> ideally, um, yeah. When it comes to that, when it comes, when I hear a comic, especially a comic at our level or below, when they start talking about cancel culture, I kind of tune out. I'm like, we're not even in a place where no anybody gives a shit about us 
for you to even be talking about cancel culture. Yeah, Dave Chappelle got canceled so hard. That's why he just had a special. <laughs> I think those people just kind of want to say fucked up stuff without the joke. Like, Correct. Yeah. It's I th- that thing that Anthony Jeselnik said of they think a comedian's job is to get away with it. Hmm. Well, that's what he's – to get away with it is to – if it was funny, you got away with it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, I get you. But like, like he was saying, like the job isn't look what I can get away with. It's being funny. Mm-hmm. And like a lot, I do think a lot of these comedians are like, they, there's, I think what happened is a lot of people learned what comedy is in 2006 and forgot that art evolves. Yeah. There was a time. Yeah, you could say crazy. Well, no, there was a time when the idea of a baseball player's last name being who was the funniest joke anybody had ever written. Yeah. Taste change. Yeah. Right? Like, th- there was a time where, you know, the the biggest music in the world was jazz. Mm. I love jazz. It's not the biggest music in the world anymore. It is not. There was a time when disco was, he- like, societal taste change. And this is also why I never find jokes funny about, oh, kids these days are wrong. No, you're just not keeping up with taste changing. You're just old. There used to yeah. be a time where, like, you know how people complain that we have too many superhero movies? Mm-hmm. We used to have more westerns. Yeah. Used to be every fucking movie was about a fucking cowboy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Taste change. Yeah. You can either change with the taste, or you can make a western that nobody's gonna fucking watch. <laughs> and so when okay, so it sounds like you were interested in comedy as a young kid. Yes. And then throughout middle school, high school, what was the thought? Were you like, I'm gonna be a comedian, or did it go away, or what was yeah, happening? I, I always say I've been writing jokes since I was nine, and I've been funny since I was 24. Mm, so like, okay. I would try, and I wouldn't get at it. Uh, but like. People you, knew that's what I wanted to be. Were you the funny kid in school, or were you the what? I was trying to be. Ah, funny. shit, yeah. Uh, but my jokes were that. Also, problem was I was nine years old watching comedy that wasn't for nine year olds. That's fair. So, you know, nine year olds should not know as much racial humor as I knew back then. Yeah. But like, also, I was a bad TV kid, not an SNL kid, so I was watching stuff that like had edge to it. Yeah. And didn't really know, like, I didn't understand the proper filters that I needed to be using. Mm -hmm. So, like, I've always joked that, like, if I went to my high school reunion, I would just spend the whole time apologizing. (laughs) (laughs) Did you have a high school reunion? Uh, I didn't go. Like, I had a 10 year, uh, 15 would have been. Interesting. Last year, so we didn't do it, or I wasn't invited, but... What are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, but also, like, I don't like most people I went to high school with. I, yeah. went, I come from a fucking entitled asshole town. Where are you from? It's called West Bloomfield, Michigan. Okay. Uh, I, I will put it this way. Um, hmm. Are you familiar with Bob Seger? I know that name. I'll look Great it up. Classic rock musician. Okay. Okay. Was a big star in the 70s. Like, the, the man never has to work another day in his life if he doesn't want to. Mm-hmm. Right? I'll put it that way. He, he was a big musician back when people bought music. Okay. I went to public high school with his kids. No. Oh. So his kids are probably... So that school itself was probably doing pretty well. Yes. Yeah, like, okay. In 2002, when the Red Wings won the Stanley Cup, I was in middle school. Dominic Hoshik's day with the cup was spent with his kid at the elementary school I had gone to. Okay. Public. Okay. I'm getting so, a sense. Yeah. So, like, entitled rich kid town. Mm-hmm. Dominic Hoshik, I am not calling you or your kids entitled rich kids. <laughs> you know, he loves this podcast, so. I love you. Please allow me in the chat room. So, okay, so you're doing you you wanted to do comedy throughout that whole point. Everybody knew it and you were for lack of a better word trying to figure it out. Yes. Okay. And then you said 24 was when you became, is that when you started doing stand up or what was going on yeah, there? Yeah, 24 is when I started regularly. So what happened was 
I had tried to do some stand up like late college mm-hmm. when I first moved to Chicago and I fucking sucked. Um, and I quit. And my brother started hosting burlesque shows in Seattle and sent me a clip, oddly enough, of him doing Who's On First. Okay. And he was like, I want to see some of your stuff. And I did not want to admit to my brother that I gave up. Mm. So I went to uh, there's a spot in Chicago called Durkin's that I don't think currently has open mics. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's like diversity and Halstead. Mm-hmm. Went up, and I think in the time that I had quit, I figured out a lot of what I was doing. Mm. Wrong. Okay. Uh, like, I, and this time, it was actually funny. Okay. And... That's when I was back in the game. That's when I consider myself actually having started. Um, what would you describe you were doing wrong? I uh, was trying to go way too edgy, right? Like, I love Jim Norton. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, you don't start off doing Jim Norton-ish stuff. Uh, not like, a... I, first joke I ever told on stage, right? Oh, Jesus, okay. I, it's terrible. Yeah. Growing up at my house is weird because uh, we didn't have the tooth fairy. We just had my dad naked. And I sleep with my mouth open. That was the first joke I ever told on the stage. That's a joke. Sure. <laughs> it's a, it's not a good joke. It's a joke. It's there's, exactly. There's structure to it. You I hear. Do it. not have to defend. It. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, all right. Here's what yeah, I. That's the shit that yeah. that I quit. Yeah. Doing. I I think here's the the here's why I'm not defending it. I'm defending. I'm defending it from the context of you first starting. Yeah. That you had structure in the first place. Because you know the classic, like, I'm just going to go up and tell a story about my life. That, or not understanding that j- set up some punchlines needs to be there. The fact that you even had that is what I'm praising. But I, yeah, I get what you're saying. I did also have, and I don't ever say this on stage, it's just a concept that I love joking about. About uh, how uh, I've never been to a strip club, but I'd want to go during the lunch rush. <laughs> so you can go eat all of the spaghetti? Well, uh, no, I mean, that's when you got to have the best talent working, right? Well, that's fair. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's what you were doing wrong. What did you end up doing right? I, I did stuff that was, like, more relatable. Like, hmm. the, when I came back, I was doing a thing that I still do sometimes now about how... Uh, it is dumb that I'm a sports fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it's it's just dumb to be a sports fan. And also, I think I had come up with like something that was my closer for a while. Uh, as as every you know new comedian closes with porn stuff. Uh, it was a porn joke that uh changed the way I look at women. I used to see a beautiful woman and think I want to fuck her. Now I see a beautiful woman and think. I want to watch somebody else fuck her. <laughs> I like that. And that is, yeah, that is a like, people can go, oh yeah, I have had that thought the and that's feelings, not right. reprehensible. Right. I want to do the thing. Not reprehensible, yes. Um, okay, so more relatable. So essentially, when you first started, because you were watching those raunchy comedians, coupled with your darker sense of humor from life, yeah. you misinterpreted how to do stand-up as being crazy almost, saying crazy yeah. shit, and not necessarily saying something that's relatable that happens to be dark or crazy or whatever. It was like I hadn't realized that like really stand-up needs to start with a human connection. Mm. Like, our job is to be fun. It's to be funny, but it's also to be related. Like, mm-hmm. sure, every once in a while, you can get a Sam Kinison who can, like, be the bad guy while doing stand-up. Don't fucking try to be that. Mm-hmm. It's, should, like... If that's just who you are, then... Right. right. I, like, now, having done stand-up as long as I have, I, like... Yeah, my philosophies are to the point where I think if I see you on stage for 20 minutes, I should know something about you by the time that you walk off. Mm -hmm. And I used to not like the kind of people who it's like, oh, I know he's gay and Korean because in 20 minutes, that's all he fucking talked about. Mm -hmm. 
but now I'm able to like look at that a little bit more. Like, yes, I do wish that there was diversity of material, right? I like it's important to talk about who you are, but it's also important to sprinkle in a couple of hey, dogs are weird, huh? Mm. Like it's, but at least if you can spend twenty minutes telling me who you are, I know who you are. Mm-hmm. Do and, you? Yeah, sorry. Oh, I, I just and that's better than twenty minutes fucking hiding yourself and trying not to have an opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's it's one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of Seinfeld. I don't know who that man is. I know he cares about innocuous things. I know he's a very good writer, but I've never been a. I don't know why we're talking about Seinfeld right now. I don't. I just don't like. I I don't like him. Uh, here's the thing: you aren't allowed to not like things. I've. Another thing, we need to talk about comedy more like we talk about music. Ooh, okay. Okay? I do not like Dave Matthews' band. <laughs> okay. But I'd have to be insane for me to say they're not talented. Sure. You can acknowledge talent without liking the right. talent. Right, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like, if somebody says they don't like a comedian, so many people take that as a, what? How could you? Yeah, I don't like country music. Yeah. I didn't grow up with the ear for it. That doesn't mean that... Darius Rucker bad. Yeah. It just means he ain't for me. The fact that you even named anybody is very impressive well, to Darius me. Darius Rucker. Is Darius Rucker? I mean, he used to be from Hootie and the Blue. Oh, yes. Yes, okay. Darius. No, Every... I can, like, country music has kind of taken over right now. I can see that. Like, I know hip-hop's in the decline in terms of the mass appeal. And country, like, a lot of the number one hits last year were country or a country singer covering Fast Car. <laughs> well, I guess good for country. Uh, yeah, but like, it's also why this year a black woman won the Country Music Award for Song of the Year for a song that she wrote 30 years ago. It's weird. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, what are you going to do? Yeah, like, I said, you know, there are plenty of popular comedians who don't make me laugh, mm. but clearly they're doing something right. Yeah, yeah. And... Yeah, you don't have to, like, if you don't love Seinfeld, cool, he's doing something right. He, yeah, he must be, I can't really diss his, his approach, clearly has worked. Right, but like, he, still, he's doing something right, but it ain't for you, and yeah. there's plenty of, like, there needs to be counter stuff, mm-hmm. right? When Seinfeld was on TV, it wasn't like every other network at that time saw it was like, yeah, bro, we'll be back in like a half hour. Yeah, yeah. They got yeah, I get you. You said you quit. Why did you quit? Because I was terrible, and like I, yeah, I guess I just like I needed that mental reset. But I was awful at the thing that I loved, mm. and like it was. Just, I I loved watching it as a kid, but since I was so bad, it. I didn't have the chance to feel the love back from it. Mm. And that hurt. Mm-hmm. Now that, you know, I've figured stuff out, I'm like, oh, I feel the love back from stand up now. Okay. But I had to, like, I had to let it go to learn the lesson I needed to learn to really be able to have it be what I wanted. I know exactly what you're talking. Like the letting go is one of the the weird things that is. I think with art in general, if yes. you hold on too tight to it, it it wants to get away from you. But if you just let it, it's like a cat. If you yeah. just just leave it alone. It'll come to you. Just, yeah. just leave it alone. I just need to let stand up sniff my hand. Yeah, that's all you need to do, man. Just let it. Just let it get comfortable with you. Um, and then during that hiatus, how long was that hiatus? Mm. Problem is, I also wasn't doing it regularly. Okay. I didn't understand. No, you need to be going to a bunch of blah blah blah. blah, blah. I was one of those idiots who was like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna go to the open mic of the Laugh Factory, <laughs> and I'm gonna be <laughs> so funny that I got discovered." And I'm gonna, like, which yeah. to anybody, it's not how it works. Yeah, it's not how it works. Uh, but like, I didn't, and especially like in Chicago, it's such a blessing because this is a community. And I wasn't 
paying attention to that year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, just a lot of, like, I had the wrong mindset. I was going to do it wrong. I was, and, yeah, I've, like, I needed to uh, sort of, I needed to get my shit mentally wrecked mm. so that I could rebuild it. Okay, I know what you mean. Yeah, the you have to hit some sort of um, uh, rock bottom, if you will, to then yeah. build up. I get you. Um, do you remember the first time we met? This question always feels like a trap. It's not. It's not. No, it's just, the the reason I say it is because a lot of times when people say that, okay, I have an answer, and they're like, "Oh yeah, but actually, five months before that." <laughs> <laughs> How about this? I'll rephrase it. I can tell you the first time I remember you. Okay. We were in Wrigleyville. It was in Stretch Stretch Bar, okay. I believe it was. And I, that particular night, I remember I was ranting about white women and I was very angry. Um, talk, I remember talking about white women, uh, using Tulsa as an example of, and all of that. And I remember you coming on. St- I remember Ariel Julie was the host. Yeah. So she came on, did whatever she did, and then you came on right afterwards. And I remember you rode that energy. That's all I remembered yeah. from the first time I met you. So speaking of you bringing up Tulsa. Okay. Okay. I'm there locked in. There was a time where uh, we're doing a show at Lincoln Lodge, and there was an entire front row of Swedish women. And you were like, I don't trust y'all. You know why? Look up Tulsa. And I had to, I've been needing to give you a lesson on different types of whites. Okay. Okay. Because Swedish people are not Tulsa whites. Okay. Okay. Tulsa whites are like, Toby Keith, I love this bar and grill whites. Uh Uh-huh. Swedish whites are wearing bikini in the snow whites. Okay. Right, those are good white. Those are the fun white. People. Are those the fun white people? Yes. I didn't know that those existed. Wearing bikinis in the snow <laughs> is a fun white people to you. That sounds crazy to me. Right. <laughs> they like so that's the like. Mm. I, I like. I remember you be like, you just but they're Swedish. They don't know about Tulsa. Yeah, that's when it comes to that. When it comes to that, I've been. My thing I've been working on is... Not comparing all white people to Tulsa? No, mostly getting in control of my emotions. Okay. That like... <clears throat> the, and I've gotten... I've, I feel much better, much more comfortable in myself and dealing with it. But with race in particular, it's been such a, uh, a heated thing for me. Sure. That when I'm on stage, coupled with the adrenaline of performing, if I pick out a thing about you that I don't fucking like i it it i want to lash out at it and so i've done a lot of work at getting control of that and look i have my issues with the city of tulsa all right (laughs) because once upon a time somebody said hey you know what would be a better city for this wnba team than detroit Hmm. tulsa Hmm. It's, it's, it's to me. It's less about Tulsa, the place, more about what it. I know. Yeah, I, I yeah. know. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. To, not everybody <laughs> thinks of Tulsa and originally thinks, oh, birthplace of Hanson, delightful group. Yeah. How do you know that that information? I like Hanson. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Like, yeah. Um, I remember but, yeah. being like, whoa, to Swedish people, that's wild. Yeah, I, I'd imagine they have no idea what the fuck I was talking about. Um, but it's, I, I think the place I'm in now to speak to my whole comedic process is comfortable in my own skin. I think that's a big part of, of starting to click and stand up and find your voice is just like, are you comfortable with just who you are? You know? The thing is, anger is beautiful. Right? Okay. Anger... To me, I've always felt that sadness creates and anger gets shit done. Mm. And, like, I've written a lot of very funny jokes from a place of anger. Mm -hmm. But it's got to be angry when you're writing it, not angry when you're, like... Performing it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, no one had to tap into that one performing it. Yeah. But, like, oh, I'm so mad about this. Let me write about it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, And having, just having a sense of... 
control, yeah. you know. Um, do you feel confident in yourself, comfortable in yourself? Yes. Uh, Stand-up-wise, yes. Okay. Just about anything else in life now. Okay. Like Stand-up is a thing where, like, I'm going to do this on years. Mm. I don't, like, I know how to listen to the audience. I don't know what I've done. Like, I know I am good at stand-up comedy. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, it's like. But everything else? Like, literally, are we joking? Are we being hyperbolic? I mean, I'm, I'm being hyperbolic. Okay, okay. But I'm generally not, like, a confident person. Why do you think that is? I've always been self doubter like, younger brother syndrome. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I grew up not being the most liked person. Mm. And so, you know, parts of that are always stick with it. Uh also, like, yeah, everybody's going to be bad at something the first time they do it, but I remember those a lot more than the, especially because it takes a while to get good at a lot of things. Like, yeah, I'm good at certain video games. I'm good at, like, well, but there are just a lot of things that, like, I just never built up. I've never had a driver's license, you know? Like, I, there's a lot of stuff that I'm not confident with. You don't have to this day? Yeah. But you, you're from Michigan. I don't know. I don't know where the fuck. I was is. able to hitch rides for people, but like, yeah. I also part of that yeah. is into. Uh, I have a tendency to fall asleep in cars. Okay, that's so, not good. Yeah, yeah, let's keep you safe. And also, like, I was in the car once with my mom when she fell asleep at the wheel. So, like, when I turned age to take driver's training, I wasn't exactly hyped for it. Right. Do you? Um, would you say that you have a lot of anxiety? About some things. Okay. Shit, I remember, like, post-COVID, right? When yeah. I first got vaxxed. Especially because I basically hadn't been able to leave my apartment, right? I'd go to the grocery store, mm-hmm. but that was about it. So, I have vaxxed, and I'm finally seeing people again. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as I get home, the I would have a giant wave of anxiety of, oh, I'm back in the lonely place. Mm. Uh, so thankfully, I haven't had anything that bad since mm-hmm. but you know the first like month of being of like being back after being back oh that shit sucked mm. I'm int- I'm sorry I'm locked in a little bit yeah. about me um, I am not good at picking I think I'm sure I'm on the spectrum of, of like autism or Asperger's because okay. I'm not good at picking up sarcasm I, if someone's p- being sarcastic or joking, I'm sure I, even in this conversation, there have been moments where I'm like, are you being hyperbolic? Like, I can't, I can't feel it. And I'm also, I get hyper fixated and I'm hyper fixated on the confidence thing because you've always seemed, I guess, because I've always talked to you in the context of comedy, I guess. And, and keep in mind that generally when we see each other, it's in places where there are people in the room that I've known for seven, eight, nine years, mm. right? Like, yeah, I'm going to be more confident around, like, Bob Key. Yeah. Because I have known that man for nine years. I have a question. Has Bob always been Bob? Bob's always been Bob, but he's gotten better at me. Like, a better version of Bob? Yes. Uh. I, I will say, like, and, and this is a lesson to everybody, when, when you stop getting shit-faced before you go on stage, because <laughs> that's what it was. He did a no fun February, and, like, oh, that's when something clicked. Yeah. Okay, uh, I want to have him back on, so I'll just I'll love deal him. with him later. Love him. Uh, <laughs> he, Bob is a fascinating one to me, um, but the the like things like not having a driver's license really surprises me to this day. Do you ever do, did you plan on doing that in the future? Is that something you're like fuck it? I don't care. It could be honestly like currently I'm in the fuck it. Okay. I, like, okay. I live in a place where having a car is almost a burden. Yeah, fair enough. Right. Yeah, it would be very difficult to be like a touring comedian without being able to drive. But also, I know my tendency to fall asleep in cars. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to drive from city to city at night when you're not able to stay awake for it. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I to me right now, it is a... Like, it's lucky that I ended up in Chicago after college. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, I, I just don't feel a, a rush... To do something to like that. To do it. Like, 
do you are you in uh, like with I don't know dating? Do you date? Do you still date? Like that's another thing where I just don't have confidence. With women uh, or yeah. okay. Uh, is what it is. Yeah. Like, Most of the time, I need a woman to tell me that she's interested in me first. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's like we all have our we all have our weird shit. Yeah, no, I'm the same. Like, yeah, definitely with me too. I'm I'm I've been working on the not assuming people hate me. Just oh, <laughs> man, that's hard to do. <laughs> yeah, like I'll go into a place and I'll sit there, like not talk to anybody, and then leave, and I'll be like, everyone fucking hated me. I must have annoyed everyone. So I'm working on that for myself. I'm There's with that you. That old, like, it's a harsh way to put it, but mm-hmm. it's the nobody thinks about you as much as you think. About yeah, that's a hundred percent accurate. Yeah, hundred percent. Because I don't think about them. <laughs> Well, it's also like it's something I tell people who are thinking of trying stand up. Yeah. The worst thing that's unless you go up there and just say the N word a bunch, which well, no, be fun. I've seen it. Right. <laughs> unless you do that, worst thing that's gonna happen is no one's gonna remember you in two minutes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Nobody. It's just gonna be you okay. mulling it over. Oh, but what about some? I have seen the worst. I have seen some of the worst people try to do stand up. At this point, if the host announces somebody's first time doing stand up, I'm either out of the room or on my phone. Yeah. Like, I just. No, you don't like to watch the, the I, disaster that's I about to occur. I know it's not going to be good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, find a punishment for your fantasy football league that isn't somebody's fucking dream. Wait, what do you mean? Oh, you haven't seen that yet. It, you. Wait, what's going on? Every, this is every year a thing. You're going to be in a mic, and you're going to be like, who are all these fucking people? Oh. Happy. Mm. And it's because one of their friends lost their fantasy football league. Okay. And their punishment is that they have to do stand-up. And so what a smart host will do, is, when this happens at a local mic, is put them at the very end of the list. Mm. So that their friends stay watching and buying drinks all night, and then the person does the worst set you've ever seen, and then it's all done. Right? But that is always happens. What I like to do instead, right? This is because because I do a fantasy basketball league every year. Mm-hmm. What I prefer is a punishment because it is cheap, it is quick, it is not traumatic, but it sucks. Hold on one second. I like to have whoever finished last in our fantasy basketball league. Uh, we we did it this year of the uh, right before the next year's draft. They have to eat. Jesus, that sounds d- difficult. It, it is, but one, it's not shit in anybody's dream. Sure. It's cheap. Yeah. It's not taking over somebody else's space. Yeah. It's just eat this onion. <laughs> do you feel like those those people that do that fantasy for the bet and all the stuff, yeah. Do you, so you feel like they don't realize that this is like your space of work, essentially? Right. They're like, oh, you know what would be real embarrassing for Jeff? Yeah. Is if he made him do stand up. And like, I was talking with Kiefer last night. Mm-hmm. Every one of them is the same, right? His, his girlfriend starts filming. And first minute, he's going to figure out how long a minute is. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be long. By the end of minute three, she's not going to be wanting to hold up the phone anymore. Yep. He's going to say something about hating women. He's going <laughs> to say something about black people. Yeah. And. We're probably gonna hear like <coughs> you're probably gonna hear a joke that you've heard thirty fucking versions of. Like it's always it again. It's somebody who doesn't really like stand up trying to do stand up, mm-hmm. and it's just never good. Right? It's it's a waste of everybody's time. So you can embarrass your friend with the thing that everybody else in that room it's their dream. Mm. Mm. Do you are you, are you frustrated by that? Do you not care? How do you feel? I, like there is a slight frustration of like yeah, it's one. Why is my dream your punishment? Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not like we're like, hey, uh, Aaron, if you are last place 
in fantasy hockey this week. <laughs> you have to open up an eraser factory. Like, well, yeah, that right? Like you have you have to take over your father's business. Mm-hmm. You have to like no. It feels like it's an insult to the craft that you love. Yeah, and then it's people who you know don't understand our space, which understandably. They're, they're not a part of it, mm-hmm. but they come in, they they think they own the list because they brought friends, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, they come in, blah, 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 and they don't like, a lot of times, as soon as their friend goes up, they leave, which, okay, but, like, you, you just came into a space and aren't, like, trying to respect us who are a part of it. Mm-hmm. You're just there to embarrass like not even there to you are there to embarrass your friend and do nothing. Yeah. And like, hey, you could if if you wanted, like, actually get to know a pretty dope community, and, like, learn about some shows. But mm-hmm. instead, you just want to embarrass your friend, who is probably stealing a Bernie Mac joke. <laughs> Hopefully, the ones that aren't the words that you can't can't say. But I know what you're saying. Um, we, you just replace it with fella. <laughs> Get on Spotify right now. Type "fellas in Paris." Show Is that me. real? Yes. I gotta look that up while I'm talking to you. Um, now, do you? It seems. I mean, you've you've really established this that stand up is is not God, but stand up is the tippy top of the mountain for you, right? It's the thing. It's the thing that I love. It's look. It, if I was offered, you know. Uh, I was offered, you know, uh, a get the fuck out of here. It's just very, that's real. Yeah. Fellas in Paris. If I was offered a spot on a sitcom, obviously I'd take it, but I'd yeah. be wanting to do stand up in the off time. Yeah. Like, to me, stand up is, it can open a lot of doors, but I'm not using it as a stepping stone to, okay, once I do this, I won't have to do stand up anymore. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, if we go to the Cat Williams on Steve Harvey thing, right? Steve Harvey doesn't do stand up because he's got seven shows. That he didn't have when he stopped doing Santa. No, I'm not getting to that point. Mm-hmm. I'm not getting to. Also, I think that morning talk radio is the. People say that comedy is the lowest form of entertainment. No, it's morning talk radio. Yeah. Uh, but, like, I would rather. Huh. If I take this daytime judge show, I can't do stand up anymore? Nah, fuck that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, with you. Do you. Do you. Uh, so, you, I know you watch sports. Yes. Um, do you do any? Do you have any other big, important, hot, like things? Obviously, not as important to stand up. But is there anything else in your life where you're like, "Fuck, that's also super important to me." I mean, I play a lot of video games. I used to be like at, at the tournament level, I was bad, mm-hmm. but I used to like do smash tournaments. Like I went to high school with somebody who, at a time, was one of the top twenty Super Smash Brothers Melee players. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, me, like I'm a big Detroit sports fan specifically. Tigers, Pistons, Red Wings, Lions. Um, okay. There are yeah, I mean, video games. I'm not a Fortnite guy. Mm-hmm. I'm not really like super into shooters. Uh, video game, sports, stand up. Yeah, video game, sports, stand up. There is like yeah, I'm trying to think of. Is there something that's not in season right now? That I mean, also just making sure that, like, my personal finances are in check. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, since something that I was talking with Rob Hines at, like, Laugh Factor's holiday party. Like, we can't undo, like, years of oppression. We can't undo redlining. We can't undo love. But what we can do is start teaching people what the fucking credit card actually is. Mm. We can start making sure that people understand what interest rate actually does to the point where like you know people aren't making like and some people like not everybody is dealt the same hand at birth sure but making sure that you at least know how to play your cards that you're not digging yourself into a deeper and deeper hole mm-hmm. and that's something that like I also like sometimes I just like try, if somebody wants help, I'm not an expert, but I know a couple things that can like help. Mm-hmm. Like for example, any real sa- any major savings account right now has a fucking terrible interest rate. You can 
get a free one that's like four percent at least. Sit on your savings, your income, you get that. Like, mm-hmm. Or it's the kind of thing that I didn't do it for a while, and I don't know why. And there's like no risk. Like, and it's I try to stay on top of me learning those things mm. so that being financially stable. Right, being financially stable, me not having to work when I'm fucking seventy. Like, mm-hmm. probably still gonna stand up, but like it's different. Yeah, but like the kind of stuff where. Yeah, nobody wants to have to worry about that shit. If I can make myself not have to worry, cool. I'm going to get back to all of this, but just real quick. You know, we were talking about the times change or whatever, and we're all going to be doing stand-up in our 70s and 80s. Do you you think it's even going to be possible to stay up? Like, do you think you'll be the old man at 70? Is it possible to still be... In tapped into the zeitgeist at seventy. I mean, there are people who do it. George Louis Carlin Black is still touring. How old is Louis Black? I mean, Louis Black is on his last tour, but I think he's like seventy-two or something. Damn. Let me, let me look this up right now. Are you a, are you a big Louis Black fan? Is he one of your guys? Louis Black. Okay. Uh, one great at harnessing anger. He is seventy-five. Uh, God yeah. damn! Like one of the guys who like, what do you watch him? You really learn how to how to tap into anger from mm. watching him. Uh, but like he's somebody who, yeah, as long as I've been a comedy fan, he's been around. I met him at a book signing. Like I don't, nothing but love for Louis Black. Mm. Uh, so uh, people's favorite comics say a lot about him. So Louis Black, Christopher Titus. Okay. So to me, it's it's my. My two gods of comedy. Okay. Right? Growing up, really into George Carlin, but mm-hmm. like, it's not as much of an influence to me anymore. Okay. My comedy gods, Christopher Titus, and then not a stand-up, Weird Al Yankovic. What? Weird Al Yankovic, <laughs> when I was in middle, when I was in preschool, my mom brought home a Weird Al album, we were listening to, the, to it in the car, and that was when I was like, I want to be funny one day. Hmm. Like, way before I found stand-up, mm-hmm. I knew I wanted to be funny because of Weird Al. And, I mean, he just won an Emmy last night. Good for him. Yeah. Uh, but, like, with Weird Al, there's also a lot of lessons. There's lessons of integrity. There's, less, like, he doesn't, parody is protected by law. He doesn't have to ask permission to do the parodies, but he does. I didn't In know the that. In the 80s, he was offered... Uh, a, a spokesperson deal from a beer company. And his answer was, not a lot of my fans are kids. Hmm. Like, no, there's a reason why no one has a bad... The newest member of his band has been with him for 35 years. Jesus. Like, there are just things that are like untouchable and being a good dude hmm. without. Uh... So part of it, I'll put it in my own words. Tell me if this is accurate. On a stand-up comedian level, Christopher Titus is peak for his ability to take that darkness and make something yeah. beautiful with it. And, and from there, there's also like Robert Schimmel. Mm-hmm. Uh, did a lot of that. Like Robert Schimmel was actually probably the first person I was aware of taking because he turned his cancer into stand-up. Mm. Uh, but so like he was who I was. First aware of taking the awful things in your life and making them funny. Christopher Titus is the one that like really spoke to me with dysfunctional family mm. and that and like made me not feel good. But uh, like uh, so mm-hmm. Car- when I was growing up, Carlin, uh, Chris Rock, the like Chris Rock has what I would put he has some singular like bits or chunks that I would put up there in this is the greatest that stand-up can be. Mm. Um, Wanda Sykes. Uh, I love, like, early Wendy Liebman. Because uh, what she would do is, like... Uh, she doesn't do as much of it anymore, but she would do this thing where she would just take a super sharp left turn. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I was sitting next to this guy on the plane, and I could tell he really wanted me to shut up because he was so focused on trying to fly the plane and he like mm. just these like just punches wait for it and then 
go right in the face. Like, Punches you don't expect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, who are... Cat Williams, uh, as as much as he is in the news right now, mm-hmm. I it might be my go-to insult saying that uh, it's in my contract that I won't work with somebody unless they're wearing a dress. <laughs> uh, but, like, Cat was huge for me. Yeah. Uh, especially because, like, Cat was really getting that when I was in, like, high school and college. Mm. And so, like, there'd be nights in college where we'd just stay in and watch a Cat Williams special. And then with Weird Al, it's his integrity. And I assume Cats as well. No, it's a lot of... It's his versatility. Like, that man has played every genre of music that's been popular over the last 40 years. Yeah. Like... He's a very talented guy. Yeah. Yeah. Is his stage... Like, he's gotten away from doing the stage shows, the live shows that he used to do. Which, like, now he does... Like, some of his last few tours, one was with an orchestra... And then some of it, hey, it's just going to be, like, mostly the original songs, no costume changes. Mm -hmm. But back when he was, like, doing the full costume changes and everything, like, when I say that I consider Weird Al the greatest entertainer of our time, I'm not being hyperbolic. That's a big statement. If you went to, like, a Weird Al show mm. back when he was doing all the costume changes and everything, that was a fucking show. Yeah. Like, and keep in mind, he's changing from a fat suit back into, like, Star Wars gear. Yeah. Like, dude was putting on a show. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, crazy that, like, this came up on my Instagram recently, but, like, also got LASIK on the local news. Like... Huh. Yeah. He sounds like weird, for lack of a better word, guy. Yeah. But also, like, just a good dude. Yeah. Like, that, that's how that is... He's been around that long, and the only person who ever had a bad thing to say about him, Coolio, right. would later say, that was the biggest mistake of my career. Yeah. Uh... Do you perceive yourself as a good dude? You're a good guy? I hope so. Okay. Uh, Because, like, also, my integrity, my professionalism is something only I can take away from it. Do you feel like you've been professional so far? I feel feel that, and, like, also, the way I treat people is entirely up to me. Hmm. Right? Like, I... when, When somebody's new, I... I always want to be like nice unless somebody gives me a reason not to be. Gotcha. Gotcha. So neutral at a neutral level, a sense of respect until something is happening. At the very worst, neutral. Right. Like, but like if somebody's new and like not funny but has the right attitude, Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll help them. Like, because at least with comedy, if I can tell that you want to leave this better than you found it, Mm. cool. Like, that's... That's what I look for in people. And that actually brings me right back around. It's perfect. So it's so you have you have um, stand up, watching sports, playing video games, and then you want to be financially secure. Yeah. Stand up gives you confidence, it seems like. Yeah. Um, does does watching sports or playing video games give you that same sense of confidence or is that separate? I mean, video games gives me like there's nothing like when a puzzle in a game or like a level's been, or like a boss battle's been kicking your ass for the last half hour and you finally get it. Mm. Like, it, you feel yourself growing and there's like a sense of accomplishment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also like, especially now, video games have incredible stories too. Yeah. It's just, like, uh, the, the other thing is, I have a theater subscription. I see a lot of fucking movies. Because mm-hmm. uh, like, the stories are fun. Uh, like sports, it's more. I'm a Detroit guy. It's mm. my. It's, it's where you're connection from. Connection back to where I'm from. It's a connection back to like my dad is who got me into sports. Mm-hmm. It's it's that sort of stuff where you know it's also like sometimes you just need to vicariously live through the accomplishments of someone who is of people who are better than you that you will never meet. 
peak athleticism. It's it's insane some of the stuff that they're able to do. Like, is it, have you ever watched a strongman competition? I have not. What's that like? So, with hockey, right? Even if you've never played hockey, mm-hmm. you can at least try to put some skates on, try to stay upright, and like hit a hit the puck with the stick. Right? Mm-hmm. You can at least do that. Yeah. Strong man, it starts with, hey, lift this 350-pound stone off the ground. That's how it starts. That's a bare minimum, 350. That's like, <laughs> what the fuck? I'm glad it's not even weights. It's a stone. Like, you have to right. go beyond what is in the gym. It's like, uh, the, the World Cup, like, in competition, I believe the record for deadlift. Yeah. Which, I don't know, set by uh, the guy who was the mountain of Game of Thrones. Because he was a straw man competitor and he's actually coming back. Good for him. 1,075 pounds. <sighs> and it's the kind of thing where it's like most sports, I could do, I, I'd be very shitty at it. Yeah. If I was in the NBA, I'd score 0. 0.0 assists, 0 rebounds. But, but I could at least do the M- yeah. technically do it. <laughs> I cannot do anything that they do in strong. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. There, there is something about someone who is so physically yeah. beyond. We're going to put this airplane in neutral. Yeah. And strap it to your back. Go 50 yards. Yeah. What? Crazy. Do you so so it's all like for the sports thing? It's living vicariously. It's not so much living. It it's more like I I kid with the living vicariously. Oh okay okay. But it is the feats of athleticism. Mm-hmm. It's the you know the connection with my hometown. But like it's that it's it's you know I'm Detroit sports till I die. Yeah. But basketball, it's also just fucking impressive. Yeah. Football, some of this shit is just fucking impressive. Mm. Like, Strongman, that shit is fucking impressive. It sounds like you have a lot of respect for it. In the, yes. in the same way you were talking about those people who show up because of the bet. They lost a bet, and they go into the space, and they disrespect the space. You would never, even though you don't play basketball, you would never go into a NBA game being an ass because you respect right. the space. Right. I, like... Don't get me wrong. I've fucked around at WNBA games with like shouting. Uh, like I'm not. I'm not insulting the players. Uh-huh. Sabrina, what are you doing after the game? <laughs> like hitting on Sabrina and asking you from the because I know she can't hear me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm like I would never tell. Like it's part of that's part of yeah, sports yeah, is yeah, yelling I would never shit tell out. An athlete that they, that Should die. Or some right. crazy well, shit. That, like, I do not like Aaron Rodgers, but what I've always said is I would love nothing more mm-hmm. than for Aaron Rodgers to wake up tomorrow in the safety and warmth of his own bed and decide that football is no longer free. <laughs> it's almost a All fate right, worse like, than death. We, we've, uh, got, we've got in, in Chicago comedy, we've got Scott Donald, mm-hmm. right? Men played in the NHL. Yeah. Quite a few years as a goal. I. Can't tell that man he's bad at hockey. Right. What I can, I can say shit like, dude, I just want to throw stuff and see if I can get it past you. Yeah. Like, I can say that. Yeah. But I know he's swiping all that shit away. Like, <laughs> Do, does does watching sports inspire you to, like, work out and shit? Not, to, not really. Like, really? No, because it's also, one, I know I can't do it. Like, you, can, I, you can work. Okay, no, all right. I, I know I can I can work out. Uh huh. Sure. Okay. I can't be the starting left defenseman for the Red Wings. <laughs> sure, sure. I, I, yes, yes. There is a. I don't like the whole. You can do anything you imagine. Because no, let's be realistic. And, and also, like even with kids, you know what? Some of these kids aren't going to grow up to be six foot eight. Right. Right. But I mean on a – just like a improving your – like, for instance, um, I've been getting into jujitsu. Okay. And when uh, – yeah. yeah, when I see some – when I watch an MMA fight, I'm like, fuck, I want to – I'm never going to be in the MMA. Never. Don't right. want to ever be in the MMA. But it does inspire me to get in shape, to, like, get – to be able to do what I can at the level yeah. I can do it. Like, that is – back when I was watching a lot of MMA, that is the closest to, like, because – 
at least with like jujitsu, also you are learning ways to defend. Yourself. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, right. Like you, if somebody grabs you from behind, it's not going to turn out well for them. Yeah, depending on the person. Yeah, right. but like if you know what you're doing, and like yeah, so back when I was watching MMA, there was a little bit of the motivation to should I try to learn jujitsu? Yeah, but watching that like. It's not going to really help me if I can hit an elbow three, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm more mean just on the exercise part yeah, of it. It's no, it. You just don't want to. Yeah, it just doesn't translate. Like, I, don't get me wrong. Mm. I need to fucking exercise. <laughs> but it just, it's not like, the Lions play at noon. I'm not going to be watching that like, yeah, I need to start running like Sam Laporta. <laughs> can I, okay, can I ask about the exercise thing? Yeah, it. You say you need, do you, is what, what, what pushes you away from it? I, it just. Sucks? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what I need to get back into is, I used to at least, and the problem is just now the weather fucking really shit. Yeah. But like, if there was during the pandemic, like I was walking a good like three miles a day mm. on a lot of days. And so that's just what I need to get back into is, if I can at least get that, that's a thing. That's mm-hmm. like. An hour and just get shit from there. Starting slow and building yeah. from there. Okay. Well, if you ever want to do workout shit with me, you're all Thank you're you. welcome to to let me know. Thank you. Are you ready for the last question? Oh shit! Already the last question. Yeah. I oh I'll take that. I always like that as a compliment when people feel like oh shit is it How over? Long is it been? A little over an hour, man. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My podcast is yeah. great. Um, but this is this is my favorite my favorite question. Yeah. Okay, if you could look into the camera, you're speaking to yourself five years from now. I'm going to show you this five years from now. Okay. And you can say whatever you want to yourself five years from now. What do you say? Make sure that... Make sure you're still building relationships that matter. You know, be yourself. Don't let... Like, look, you know this, you say it more than anybody. Your integrity is something only you can take from you. Mm-hmm. Just be that. Also, um, now that it's been five years, uh, you know, I, did we have to give up our left out with the Lions for the Super Bowl or just the third one? <laughs> third time? Okay, cool. <laughs> Let's take this picture. 